Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 9 academic students who are working towards the June EQAO. It's video number 3 of the practice package solutions. So onwards and onwards, here we go. We're on to question 14. In the soccer league, a win counts for 2 points, a tie for 1 point, and a loss counts for 0 points. A soccer team has 5 wins, 2 ties, and 3 losses. If the team continues to win, tie, and lose in the same ratio, which of the following values is the best prediction of their point total after 40 games? Well, okay, so after 40 games, well, let's figure out how many games they've played right now. If they have 5 wins, 2 ties, and 3 losses, they've played 10 games. And in those 10 games, what point total are they at? So 2 points for every win, that's 10. 1 point for every tie, so 2 more, and then no points for the losses. So right now, after 10 games, they have 12 points. And we want to know that if they continue to win, lose, and tie in the same ratio, so that would mean that every 10 games, they get 12 points. And so after 40 games, they would have 10 times 4, so 12 times 4, they would have 48 points. So again, I just did that by using ratios and looking for the multiply factor. And thankfully, 48 points is right there. A nice ratio question. Question 15. Which of the following cannot be the equation of a line? So we know, let's look quickly, x equals 2, that's a vertical line like this. y equals 7, that's a horizontal line like this. Uh, x squared, I don't know what the heck... Hmm, this is just a, a line in standard form, so it's got to be C. Remember that the equation of a line has two variables, often X and Y, but not always. And X or Y cannot be squared, cannot be square rooted, cannot have another variable like 3 or 7 over 4. And you can't have X or Y on the bottom of a fraction. All of those things make you have a non-linear relationship. So here the exponent 2 tells me it's not a linear relationship. Question 16. Which of the following is the equation of the line 6x minus 2y minus 12 equals 0 in the form y equals mx plus b? Well, we certainly did this sort of algebra a lot in class, so much that I hope that it's fairly automatic. So here's the original equation of the line we're given. And the first thing we have to do is we have to isolate the y term. So here's the y term. It says negative 2y. So that stays put. Everything else we want on the other side of the equation. So 6x is going to move over here, and negative 12 is going to move over here. And of course, when something moves to the other side, the reason why it moves is because we eliminate it. To eliminate 6x, I have to do minus 6x. To eliminate negative 12, I have to do positive 12. So I have isolated the negative 2y term, and now I need to get y itself isolated. And so that means I need to get rid of the multiplication of negative 2. So divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and let's see what happens. So here, I'm left with y. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3x. And 12, positive 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. So the answer is B. Nivenka and Juan scuba dive. The graph below represents the relationship between the distance from the surface in meters and time in minutes for both divers as they swim down from the surface and then swim back up. Well, what a confusing looking graph this is. So here I'm measuring distance from the surface. In other words, this represents Nivenka swimming down, and this represents her swimming back up. So that's sort of a confusing looking graph, and it's really important that you understand that, that distance from the surface, if you're diving, this is diving down, because you're getting deeper or further from the surface. And this is diving up. The same thing for Juan. This is Juan diving down and Juan diving up. 
So it says, which statement is true? So Juan swims back up at a rate of 0.5 meters per second. So this is the portion of the graph where Juan is swimming up. So the slope would be, so we're going from, what would that be? That would be nine. So Juan is traveling nine meters and it's taking him 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So it's taking him 10 seconds to go 9 meters. Now that's 0 0.9 meters per second, not this. So it's not A. Uh, here's another option. Does Nevenka swim back up at a rate of 4.5 meters per second? So let's look at this. So here is she is swimming back up. And she goes a total distance of 18 meters. And it takes four seconds. So 18 meters, like minutes, sorry, 18 meters and eight minutes is 4.5 meters per second. And that's what B says, that she's swimming up at a rate of 4.5 meters per second. Now let's double check everything else, because again, this is what I recommend. If you have time, double check everything else. Novenka swims down faster than she swims up. So here she is swimming down at this slope. Now she's swimming up. Well, swimming up is clearly a steeper slope than swimming down. Juan swims down and back up at the same rate, and you can see that these are not the same slopes. They definitely have maybe the same rise, but clearly different runs, and that means different slopes. So the answer is B. Alex has $150. She spends the same amount each week. After six weeks, she has $30 remaining. The relationship between the amount of money Alex has and the number of weeks is represented by a line. What is the slope of this line? Well, think about this question first of all. So it's the relationship between the amount of money she has and the number of weeks. She keeps spending money. So she started off with $150, but she keeps spending it. So she keeps having less and less money. So therefore, this has to be a negative slope because she's losing money. So before I do any math, I'm going to cross C and D off because it's a negative slope. She's losing money, not gaining it. Oops. Now, the question is at what rate? So what is the speed or the slope at which she's losing money? So we know that 150 minus 30, she has $120 spent in six weeks. And that means she spent $20 a week. And it, again, it's a minus 20 because she's spending it, not gaining it. She's losing money. Which of these graphs represents this equation? So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to rearrange it and then look at the graphs. So it's in what I call substandard form. Um, so I have x and y on the left and I have the constant term on the right. So the first thing is I need to isolate the entire y term. So I'm going to isolate negative 4y, which means I need to subtract 2x. So on both sides of the equation, I'm going to subtract 2x. Now the plus 8 doesn't go anywhere. It's still plus 8. It just had to make room for the 2y. And I'm just going to make this a little neater here. That's better. Now that I've isolated the y term, I need to isolate y entirely, which means divide by negative 4 on both sides. So everything gets divided by negative 4. So I end up with y equals. Now negative 2 over negative 4 is 1 over 2. x. And this would be 8 divided by 4 is 2. A positive divided by a negative is negative. So I'm, I'm looking for a starting value of negative 2. So this one could be right. This one can't be right. It's not c. This one could be right. This one can't be right. So it's not c and it's not D. Now between A and B, one of them has a positive slope, like my line, and it's A, positive slope, negative two y-intercept, and I can even now check the slope, rise one, run two, rise one, run two, looks good to me. Which equation represents a line that has the same y-intercept as this? So first of all, let's find the y-intercept. And there's two good methods for doing it. One is to rearrange the equation into y equals mx plus b form. 
And then if you look at the B, you're looking at the y-intercept. But I've already shown you a couple examples of rearranging the equation. So this time, I'm going to find the y-intercept the other way. I'm going to let x equal 0. Because when you let x equal 0, you're finding the y-intercept. So x is 0. I do a substitution. And let's see what happens. 2 times 0 is 0. So I really have 3y minus 6 equals 0. I'm trying to solve for y, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Divide by 3. And I get y equals 2. So the y-intercept of this line is 2. And the only one with a y-intercept of 2 is a. Nate buys a video game system. The game costs $300. Games cost $60. He pays 13% tax on the system and the game. He has $850 to spend. How many games can he buy? So first of all, let's figure out what tax is. So on a $300 system with 13% sales tax, he would end up paying $339. For a $60 game with 13% sales tax, he would end up paying $67.80 for each game. So $67.80. So if he starts with $850, we know that he's going to pay $339 for the game itself plus $67.80 for each game that he buys. So I need to figure out what value of G fits into this equation. So I'll subtract $339. So $339 is the money he spends on the game system itself. And that gives me 511 left over to spend on games. So each game is $67.80. So if I divide by 6780, let's see what happens. Oh, my pen messes up. But what happens in your calculator when you divide by 6780 is you get 7.5. Now, you can't just buy a half a game, which means I can buy seven games is fine, but I don't have enough for eight games. So the answer is that you can buy no more than seven games. One shows the steps he took in rearranging a formula. In which step did he make an error? So he starts with this, and then he multiplied by 2. So 2L plus 2W, so that looks right to me. So now he's trying to isolate 2W, so he subtracts 2L from both sides. Oh, he forgot to subtract. He added, therefore his mistake is in step two. So that's enough for this video. I'm going to press stop, and I'll meet you in video number four.